Can I talk about the GT40 now? Yes. Good. Uh, you see, over the years, a number of kit car manufacturers have made copies of it. They've been kind of plastic facsimiles with that Rover V8 engine that you were talking yep. about earlier. Absolutely. Some had the Mustang engine as well, and to be honest, some were pretty good. I mean, these are very good indeed. Fantastic. But now, Ford themselves has had a go at making a copy. So think of it really as a GT40 for the 21st century. This isn't it. This is the old GT40, the one from the 60s, the 7 litre, 200 mile an hour monster that won Le Mans four times on the trot. This is the new version, which Ford says merely takes its inspiration from the old one. But it has the same massive haunches, the same enormous tyres, the same Emmental front end, all full of holes. When you put the two of them together, they really do look exactly the same. Except for one thing. The old car was called the GT40 because it's 40 inches tall. Look, it isn't even as high as my legs. And as a result of that, I've never been able to fit inside. Let me show you the extent of the problem. OK, you have to kind of thread your legs between the steering wheel and the gear lever. There we go. OK, I've got my knees under the dash. My feet are on the pedals. But technically, you have to say I'm not really in the car. No. It's kind of a fat peg in a small hole, really. Happily, however, the new car is 43 inches tall, which means I can fit inside, and that means I can take it for a drive. Bye. drove one of these cars in America last year, but that was a pre-production mule. This, this is the £111,000 finished product that customers will actually buy. So let's see what it's like. The acceleration is astonishing! It actually hurts your neck muscles. <laughs> it's trying to hold your head upright. But then it would, because this car develops 550 brake horsepower and 500 pounds-feet of torque. It's not just faster than the old racer. It's faster than any car you can buy today. Into third, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, into four, 150, 160. And I'm running out of runway. The top speed is 212 miles an hour. So it's faster than the Porsche Carrera GT and the McLaren Mercedes, both of which are three times more expensive. The key to this ferocious speed is, of course, the engine. It's a 5.4-litre supercharged V8. But don't get too excited, because it says here it was hand-built, with pride, by Ronald and Ken. Basically, it was hand-built by Ron and Ken. And the block, well, uh, well, that comes from one of those. Yep, the GT has pretty much exactly the same engine as a Ford Lightning pickup truck. Just like the old GT40 then, this is a blue-collar, working-class hero taking a sledgehammer to the blue-blooded automotive aristocracy. 
notice, though, is it's all very civilised. I was expecting it to sound like a wolf stuck in a gin trap. I'm doing 130 miles an hour now, and I barely have to raise my voice. This is amazing when you think that huge engine and the whirring supercharger belt are just an inch behind your right ear. And even more amazing is the suspension, which cushions you from all the bumps and the ridges in the road. Because it's so quiet and comfortable, you sometimes think oh, it's a normal car, but of course, it isn't. The steering, for instance, is incredibly direct and incredibly precise. Just have to run over the white lines and I can tell whether they used gloss or emulsion paint. Gloss. Then there's the brakes. The deceleration is so ferocious, it kind of pulls your head forwards. I'll end up looking like a giraffe at this rate with my neck muscles. A little bit more understeer than I was expecting here, but there's so much power we can cure it with a dab of throttle. There we go. 